the webinar? Yeah, I think yeah, it's done. We are okay. We are now recording also. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, hello from my part. I am uh, Professor Constantina Zerva from the University of Zirona. And along with Professor Mohamed al from the University of Jordan, we are the coordinators of uh, the sub-network Mediterranean Tourism of UNIMED. And welcome to the second thematic webinar that we have organized for you this year. Uh, so I'm gonna make a very quick presentation for those of you that may not be very much aware of UNIMED and a little bit about its structure very, very quickly. And then we're gonna start with the presentations of today. Uh, so, um, UNIMED uh, is a network of 140 universities uh, all over the world, uh, research centers from 23 countries from both shores of the Mediterranean, and it was founded in uh, 1991. So basically, the mission of uh, this network is uh, to promote collaboration among higher educational institutions in the Mediterranean region to enhance institutional, economic, cultural, and social cohesion of the area. Um, there are many uh, sub-networks uh, within UNIMED, and uh, one of them is the one that uh, has organized this particular um, uh, webinar. It has to do with Mediterranean tourism. And here, basically, what we are interested uh, to do uh, is to speak about and talk about current issues that may refer and may interest uh, tourism development in the Mediterranean area, and the particular, let's say, characteristics of the Mediterranean uh, area. Uh, very quickly, our network uh, has uh, uh, as members, 22 universities from 10 countries. Uh, and here you can see more or less so those these countries. We speak about Algeria, France, Italy, Jordan, Lebanon, Libya, Palestine, Portugal, Spain, and Turkey. Uh, and here also you can see our names of the coordinators. And of course, we would really like to thank for the organization of this webinar, Emilia Stoduto, uh, that has been helping us a lot with uh, organizing uh, your presentations and today's meeting. Um, as you know, the, um, the topic of today's, um, uh, of today's webinar has to do with tourism and sustainability, case studies from the Mediterranean region. Um, as you can see here, the objective is to speak about a very current and, and a very uh, interesting topic. It, it was interesting before the pandemic, but really after the COVID pandemic, uh, everything was a little bit more, the interest was a little bit more on uh, sustainability and tourism. Um, there are many perspectives regarding it. And today we are going to uh, see three different case studies from three different countries, Portugal, Italy, and Jordan, uh, talking about and explaining three different perspectives related to sustainable uh, tourism. Uh, one has to do with the idea of uh, smart villages and technologies. The other one has to do with perception of residents regarding sustainable development. Uh, and the other one has to do with ecotourism as a tool in sustainable tourism. So from my part, uh, once again, I want to thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, it's going to be a, a webinar of about an hour and a half. And now I pass the word to uh, uh, the other coordinator of this um, sub-network, uh, Dr. Professor uh, Mohamed al uh, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zerva, for uh, this uh, introduction. <clears throat> and again, I would like to welcome all of you for joining us today in our second webinar. Uh, we are very happy and uh, it's our pleasure uh, to having all of you uh, with us uh, today. And uh, let me uh, start the uh, talking by thanking the speakers who are joining us from, uh, as Dr. Zerva mentioned, from different countries. And they will uh, present and share with us uh, their results or their research from different case studies and from uh, different uh, countries. So by my name and by uh, the names of the members of the SIP network, thank you all for uh, uh, for coming today and joining us to share your uh, presentations. So uh, as Dr. Zerva mentioned, we have or we will have three speakers from uh, different countries, uh, three case studies, interesting case studies that uh, will show us how tourism is related to sustainability and uh, um, related to sustainability from different angles actually we, we will have some some presentations about the perceptions of residents uh, a presentation about the technologies and uh, um, a presentation about uh, ecotourism as a tool for uh, sustainable development before starting the presentations i would like kindly to remind the speakers 
that uh, you will have 20 minutes for the, your presentation. And after each intervention, we will have uh, we will open the, the the stage for five minutes questions from the the, the audience. Uh, our first speaker today are uh, Dr. Maria Horcia Borges and Dr. Juana Lima from University of Evora. Uh, Dr. Maria and Dr. Jo Juana are assistant professor at the uh, Department of Sociology, and they are a member of the uh, Alentejo Sustainable Tourism Observatory scientific team. And they are going to talk about the perceptions of residents on tourism and sustainability. Dr. Maria and Dr. Joanna, thank you for joining us. And the mic is yours. OK, so good morning to all the participants. But uh, before, uh, before proceeding with the presentation, we would like to thank to UNIMED, special to Emilia, and also to Constantina and Mohamed for inviting us uh, to participate in this webinar to discuss some facets of tourism and sustainability in the Mediterranean region, and also to share our experience regarding uh, the study case and the interesting results that we obtained so far. We also take these initial minutes uh, to greet the other colleagues who will intervene in this webinar to share also uh, their experience, namely Luisa Carbon and Malek Jamaliaha. So um, I will start uh, sharing with you some slides that show us uh, some of the main um, results. Um, the question is, um, is there some sustainability regarding um, Alentejo's perceptions, uh, residents' perceptions? So this is a provocative question that we would like to explore with some of you uh, in the discussion period. So uh, we are going to uh, do a brief presentation of us to observatory because uh, this study uh, was carried out um, in the context of the observatory. Then we will uh, give some reasons to answer the, these questions. Uh, why, do, why to study residents' perceptions? Then I will show you some of the results and uh, the methodological framework and also uh, some um, information about ongoing and future activities considering the, um, the study of um, residents' Uh, perception, perceptions. So um, regarding um, the place where we are um, doing some research, I present you uh, some uh, one map of um, the, the destination we are um, studying. So uh, we are uh, in uh, Europe, in Portugal, and in Portugal we are in this big region that uh, is called Alentejo. And this is where we do uh, our research. And uh, the results that we are going to present is um, about a study that we did in all uh, this region. Um, our university uh, is also in Alentejo region uh, as uh, our observatory, observatory is also here uh, uh, doing um, its work. Um, so uh, our mission is to, uh, the observatory mission is to promote knowledge management to monitor the sustainable development of the tourist destination Alentejo. So this uh, is a very big uh, task, but uh, interesting. Uh, our vision is to be an information center of excellence that inspires tourist agents to transform the Alentejo destination into a, a, a more sustainable territory and to be an international reference. Our main goals uh, is um, to measure and monitor the behavior of Alentejo, Alentejo tourism destination regarding sustainable tourism development using the reference methodology proposed by a World Tourism Organization. 
A second main goal is to develop a methodological framework for uh, performance assessment using indicators to monitor the sustainable development of tourism activities in Alentejo, as I said. And in this webinar, we will uh, share with you uh, just one of the several um, uh, research that we are uh, conducting. Uh, a third goal is about the development of a technology, technological tool for collecting primary and secondary data that we call the Pista Digital. This, this instrument uh, will uh, be available uh, maybe in six months, and uh, we there we will going to share um, a very interesting information and also the information that uh, today we are sharing with you. Um, this uh, platform is to provide tourism stakeholders with a knowledge uh, instrument that contributes to their involvement in assessing the risks, costs, impacts, and limits of the activity in the destination. Also, to facilitate the identification of innovation opportunities in their organizations and business, and also to uh, assist stakeholders in the identification of better solutions for the use of resources within the general principles and guidelines of sustainable tourism development. So um, in this uh, context, um, I can share with you that we are work working in 11 different areas. And one of these areas, as I said, is the, the, is the resident's local satisfaction. So, uh, why should we study residents' perceptions regarding the sustainable development? There are several um, reasons. Um, I, I just uh, want to share with you uh, four of them. In fact, residents are part of the tourist activity and contribute to the success or uh, failure of tourist experience lived in a destination. Also, residents' attitudes and behaviors towards visitors influ influence their decision to return uh, to the destination. And uh, we must understand uh, the reasons uh, for that. Also, residents are one of the tourism actors most affected in their daily lives by tourism development. So we want to understand if this is in a positive or in a negative way or in what uh, phase we are regarding this approach between residents and tourists. Also, uh, to successfully develop a sustainable destination, it is necessary to involve the community in the planning, in the man management and monitoring of tourism activities. So this is some of the main reasons uh, that lead us to develop this study. So uh, regarding the main results, um, I will show you some um, key points regarding socio-demographic characterization of the residents who respond to the, our questionnaire. Um, I also will tell you what are the residents' favorite visitors and what is the perception, perception of residents about where and how often they come into contact um, with uh, visitors. And then uh, Joana will take over uh, this presentation. So. Um, Regarding um, the, our regions, uh, we did the study um, with a sample that can uh, give us uh, an idea of all uh, the, of the opinion of all the residents. Um, he, so we have this percentage, percentage that show uh, a balance uh, between all the different main areas of our or a global destination. We have uh, five um, uh, main administrative areas. So, so this is a place of residence uh, uh, of our study. Then we considering the, the gender, the sample is well balanced due to the methodology approach that um, uh, we developed. Also uh, regarding uh, the uh, surveyed residents were uh, regarding their age group, they were divided in three main age groups according to um, the age structure of the region uh, population. Um, regarding marital, marital status of the residents, 
uh, most of them were married or cohabitating with uh, other with other person. So 56 of percentage of residents um, lived with someone someone else, and 35 um, of the residents um, are single. Regarding the, uh, the question if they uh, have a profession in tourism, only 18% uh, responded yes. And regarding academic uh, qualification, as we can see, secondary education uh, is the most representative. Um, the residents with a secondary education uh, level is the most rep representative of our sample. And after that, we have the bachelor's degrees and uh, post-graduation or uh, master degree and, and so on. So uh, regarding the question, uh, uh, what is your favorite tourist? We, um, we have, uh, uh, we had, uh, sorry, 60% 60, 60, uh, of the residents that respond to the, this question, but 40% did not. Regarding the 60%, we have some interesting um, answers, namely 27% um, of the residents who respond to this question said that uh, it depends on the nationality of the visitor. Um, in this case, 72% uh, said that they prefer English, Spanish, French, Brazilian, or German um, tourists. 21 of, of these residents said that they prefer um, Portuguese tourists. And 7% uh, said um, that they prefer um, foreigner uh, tourists, but they didn't uh, um, identify um, the nationality. Uh, in another perspective, 26% um, of the, the residents said that um, the preparation of um, tourists depends on their uh, behavior. So uh, for these residents, they must be polite, they must be interested in the culture, respect culture, respect nature, uh, and so on. 7% uh, said that they like all the visitors and 3% said that depends on the type of the, the visitor, uh, namely, namely if they are a cultural visitor, who uh, the one who publicized the destination, the nature, um, the visitor with the economic power, um, among other um, uh, characteristics. And, uh, only 1% said that it depends on the age of the visitor. Some of them said that they prefer seniors and others prefer uh, young people. Regarding location and frequency contact of residents with vi visitors, uh, the, highest, the highest percentage of residents, uh, almost uh, 76% uh, said that they contact with them on the street when visitors approach them for information, also in restaurants and um, on the street when, um, when residents walk as part of, the, the, of their daily routine. Uh, also, um, a very interesting um, uh, point is in these areas of touristic interest, which is cultural business, and this means that um, residents uh, are um, um, having experience in tourists um, in tourist uh, um, services or or spaces, also in some commercial uh, spaces. In at also at events, but uh, only uh, fifty two percent at their workplace, and almost and about 40 percent in a night life venue. So um, this is the the biggest uh, figures that uh, I had to show you. And now uh, Joana Lima will go on presenting the uh, impacts um, of tourists. Yeah. 
Thank you, Rosario. Um, so now I, I will present. Um, wait. Now I will present. Um, I'm going to present some results regarding the, the residents' perceptions uh, on the different dimensions of tourism impacts. Um, as you we, as you can see here, uh, I'm going to start with the economic impacts um, and the, the percentages that we present here um, are the, the percentages of residents that agree or totally agree with uh, the, the sentences you can see here. So we clearly see that um, residents seem to agree that less with the negative uh, impacts, economic impacts, as you can see, only 47% uh, percent, um, believes that it increases the prices of goods, but 47% um, is already a, a, a percentage that makes us uh, think about uh, these, these effects. Also, they, they believe that tourism uh, increases work, um, work uh, con uh, the, uh, work precarious conditions so it deteriorates the work conditions um, that exist in their municipality uh, we believe this is is related with the seasonality um, of tourism demand eventually also uh, but on the positive side uh, tourists seem to agree more with the um, with the sentences regarding the the impact of tourism on local and typical activities they they strongly agree with um, that tourism develops local and typical activities attract new investors uh, and creates jobs for uh, the residents also uh, it creates new services and uh, businesses uh, regarding um, the social impact, here we see that uh, in Alentejo, and I'm going to uh, to highlight this because these are results for Alentejo. I believe that the the perceptions will change much uh, when we talk about different destinations, as as all of you uh, are aware, uh, and we see that uh, only 15% of the residents uh, seem to no notice some kind of uh, social negative impacts, and the, the most uh, the the um, the impact the negative impact uh, that uh, residents um, noticed is related with stress and uh, disrupts calm and tranquility okay uh, also uh, associated with alcohol alcohol and drug consumption we believe that it's most alcohol because um in alentejo uh, i don't know if you know but uh, we are a destination um well known for our good wine very good wine uh and uh, but but only 15 percent associate this to some kind of negativity. Uh, regarding the positive social effects, we can see that um, 60 percent, more than 60 percent of the required residents um, think that um, tourism is uh, is good for uh, recognition, prestige and ima uh, image of the municipality. Also, it contributes to improve the urban infrastructures um, and residents benefit from more and better services. OK, so um, regarding cultural cultural impacts it's very similar with the social ones uh, residents tend to um, disagree with negative negative impacts and they believe um, they believe that um, tourism brings uh, positive cultural impacts more uh, as the enhancement of uh, intangible heritage also helps to maintain alive some traditions, uh, traditional arts and crafts, ways of life, uh, and it helps to preserve and value cultural identity. 
regarding the environmental impacts of tourism, um, they, they perceive a slightly uh, higher um, negative uh, impacts re re related with traffic and parking problems here uh, in Alentejo, uh, in some cities, uh, uh, we have some very, <laughs> very marked uh, parking problems um, related with the, with the physical conditions of the cities. Uh, historical cities and etc. Also, they believe that tourism. Uh, Twenty percent of the residents believe that it, uh, tourism increases po uh, pollution levels. Um, on the the positive side, uh, for more than forty percent of the residents think that tourism preserves natural heritage and natural resources, improves public infrastructures, improves the clean uh, cleanliness of the municipality by the authorities, and uh, it contributes to uh, improve the road signing system. These are the main uh, perceptions. Then we asked uh, the residents um, their perceptions on tourism development, and they they they. Uh, they identified as most negative aspects of tourism development in the uh, at their municipality the lack of qualified human resources in tourism so this is not um an impact uh it's uh, um it's some uh, they are um, they are noticing that they don't have at the, the region, we don't have qualified human resources in tourism, and that can be a problem for tourism development. Um, also, um, on the positive side, and I'm looking <laughs> to my, my time, and um, I will pass to the positive side, uh, they, they think that sustainable tourism is essential for the future success of tourism development. So they are aware of the need of sustainability. Uh, and they agree and support tourism development at their municipalities. This was um, a sentence with which more than 70% of the residents agreed on. Uh, then we ask what can be uh, done to improve tourism at your municipality. Uh, they, they say that um, improvements in tourism offer, um, improvements on information promotion and marketing, and also signposting. They, they believe these are the two main um, issues to be uh, improved for the success of tourism at their municipalities. Uh, so now I, I'm going uh, to to tell you just uh, how uh, how did we um, proceed in methodological terms. We choose a quantitative uh, approach and uh, um, a probabilistic sampling. So our results uh, can be generalized to the population of Alentejo. Uh, this probabilistic sample was, uh, was a multi-stage cluster uh, approach and based on the municipalities, uh, tourism intensity index, as you can see there, uh, also based on end, uh, gender and age group criteria. We interviewed more than 2,600 residents in the region um, in 30, uh, 34 municipalities uh, during uh, 2019 and 20, before the COVID pandemics. So um, ongoing and future, what are we doing now uh, after these results? First, we are we are continuing to to explore these results and analyzing and try to we will try to 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 explore some differences between municipalities from the inland and from the the coast for example uh, we will try to to analyze the factors that will um, have some influence on eventual different perceptions on tourism but we we consider that is important to consider 
COVID impacts on the residents' perceptions of tourism. So we have already um, started a new survey that will uh, will take this year and next uh, uh, started last year, sorry, <laughs> and will last during the current year. Uh, we also um, uh, last year, we also uh, uh, launched a, sur a survey to understand the, the COVID impact, uh, the, um, the impacts of COVID on Portuguese's travel intentions. So not only on the resident side, but we are trying to understand on the, the demand side. Um, and we are working um, on a project to build a digital platform for monitoring the impacts of tourism. Uh, our project is called Pista, Pista and um, we have a website and the main objective is to, to build a digital platform that can be um, that can be a base for monitoring the impacts of tourism in Alentejo. So uh, the um, the question arises as a challenge for debate. The, the the question we started our presentation with is um, so is really there some sustainability uh, in tourism in Alentejo? And it's uh, it's more a challenge uh, to debate than uh, we don't have the, the answer right now, but we would like you to reflect on that and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Maria, and thank you, uh, Dr. Joana. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, actually, understanding the perception of residents to our tourism development is an important step uh, to get their support that will help us to achieve the goals of sustainable development. Thank you for this great presentation, and uh, we have some questions. Uh, let me read the questions. Or. Uh, we have a comment, it's not a question, from Jose Francisco Bentez. I agree with the three out of the four premises about the residents, but do not with one that says that residents are part of tourism experience. If so, that's a very tiny part of it when it should be a much bigger part of it. Many tourists never took to the locals, but waiters and hotels and stuff. Yeah, it's 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 a more than uh, a comment, more than a question. I don't know, uh, Maria or Duana would like to to add something about that. Yeah, or... I can add something. I don't know if Duana wants to add as well. Mm -hmm. So, due to our level of, level of development, um, there. Um, there are uh, informal contacts between tourists and residents. So um, I, I think in our case, um, that is a very important reason due to the um, informal contact that tourists have uh, often with residents. Of course, that uh, when tourists stay in um, uh, accommodation and when they are in restaurants that um, offered um, service only for tourists, uh, of course, uh, um, I agree with him, but we have this level of informality that uh, uh, tourists appreciate very much in our region. And also we know, for example, in uh, Azores, um, uh, this is a very important facet of tourism, th this spontaneity, okay? I don't know if Joanna wants to add the uh, Add something about these comments. And thank you for the, the comment uh, who did it. Thank you very much. Thank yes, you. Yes, uh, I think Rosario uh, already said it. It depends on the destination and its um, specific features. But uh, in, in destinations with uh, these uh, features, uh, residents are really part of the tourism experience. We have also. Uh... A question from Paulo Pinto. Uh, he's asking the questionnaires were done mostly in urban areas. He's asking about the questionnaire. Where the where did you distribute the, the questionnaire? Is it in urban areas or? Uh, 
Um, we uh, we we assured that 50% uh, of each um, of each uh, municipal uh, or, or we divided the the Alentejo into uh, nudes of third level. After that, we ensure that in each in each nut uh, we uh, interview fifty percent of the population. Okay. Uh, after that, we um, we need to uh, we need to assure that uh, the the gender and age group criteria were uh, met. So we uh, we apply the stratificated um, sampling approach. Okay, and uh, so we assure that um, uh, that rural and uh, urban cities, uh, urban areas, uh, have the the same representativeness that really have on Alentejo. Okay. Okay. Um, we have another question also just raised uh, from uh, Doctor Radi. He's asking you what can local authorities do to decrease negative economic impacts of tourism over residents and investors in tourism sector uh, yeah. okay okay Rosario you There's... can do it you are an economist <laughs> as well <laughs> okay. okay so um in the case of Alentejo um we uh, we see that the the main uh, negative impacts perceived by residents were those related with the the increase um, the increase in the price of goods products and services uh, and also the the precarity uh, conditions of work so um, I think that uh, the authorities need to to pay some attention to this. Uh, it's difficult to to have some control on prices mainly uh when we are talking about foreign visitors we we receive a, a good part of foreign uh, foreign visitors at alentejo so that may be hard to um to control by local authorities um but i think that uh, some measures may be taken by the, the, the employers uh, to try to, to, to invert um, this, this, ten, this tendency of uh, having precari precarious conditions associated with the, the tourism work. Okay, I think that uh, uh, the, the, that will be um, uh, a strong issue to to uh, to to consider and to try to in some ways in, uh, make some some incentives for uh, for the the investors to to consider the the need for good conditions of work and this is a a, a, a a global uh, concern right now, not only in Alentejo. Rosario, no, it's okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank, thank you. you. Um, um, just we need to thank you, Maria, and thank you, Jose, uh, Joana, for the presentation again. And we need to continue the the uh, the speakers and the presentations. And let's move to the second uh, uh, speaker today. Uh, who is Dr. Uh, Dr. Luisa Carboni from University of Tusha, who is uh, an associate professor in geography and geographic information system at the Department of Humanities, Communication and uh, Tourism at the University of uh, Tusha. Uh, her studies are applied to the role of geographic information and the application of uh, GIS, the Ge Geographical Information System, in urban ecotourism marketing. And she's uh, going to talk about the technologies, environment, and tourism in the smart villages. I know you have a uh, limited time, Dr. Uh, Luisa, but uh, again, thank you for uh, joining us today, and the mic is yours. Thank you very much for this invitation. I apologize, but uh, I can't put the video on. 
uh, share my presentation. Can you see my presentation? Yes, Professor. Okay. Uh, my experience and research on sustainable tourism is focused on smart villages. The studies of these uh, uh, of the urban space in this post-pandemic era makes us reconsider once again the effect the transformation and communication are producing, but above all, the community's perception of the environmental capital and tourism resources. The COVID-19 emergency has uh, dri driven to rethink the system of values, lifestyles, and the needs of communities. In this perspective, it has uh, relaunched the role uh, of the so-called smart villages. These smart villages, uh, uh, which are characterized by low density and rural depopulation, digital divide, division between urban and rural areas, and centralization of basic services. Our experience uh, a new vision that uh, places them at center of territorial marketing interventions, decline in the four following dimensions, urban, agriculture, environment, and technological. In this context, technologies are central to the revitalization of the territories. In particular, there is an interest uh, in the use of geographic information system, GIS, which are tools and consolidated methods for geolocation, for the monitoring of the environment risk over the time, and for the use of the environment heritage, and for the economic and sustainable policies that pursue and efficient production and increased competitiveness and a quality uh, production. Therefore, the concept uh, uh, of sustainability is no longer linked only to eco competitive energy saving and the waste management, which now partial indicators of the quality of life, but becomes a new way of generating value requiring more systematic recourse to dimension, to actors, to uh, approaches, to policies, which can make a new development model in different contexts. In this way, the interaction with the territory and the technological enhancement become factors of attraction, an effective meeting point between the need to economically develop the territory and the need for a new way of experiencing it. From this point of view, smart villages are characterized by being hybrid territories and resilient to the historical and environment events uh, that distinguish them. Uh, smart villages, which can be divided in three types, historical centers encapsulated in urban sprawl, new settlement transfigured by the homologating recovery of tourism and abandoned for natural or catastrophic reasons. The abandoned smart villages are affected by three types of divestment, complete uh, partial abandonment due to the settlement problems and uh, villages that have uh, a new founded center within walking distance. In this context, green capital and uh, its sustainability is becoming one of the most consistent objective for the success of every operation in the territories. Territories that are currently experiencing a new season and that place the right of citizens to a quality, a high quality of life. An example of these uh, uh, interventions are the strategy of inland area of uh, 2014 and the low save uh, villages of 2017, which provides measure for
for the support and uh, uh, enhancement of small municipality and for the conservation, recovery, and redevelopment of the historical centers considered for the significant distance from the main centers of supply of essential services and the presence of important resources. Essential cultural and environmental resources on which it's now possible to structure a specific development path of an informational geography uh, that allows new ways of interaction and conceive new behaviors in the citizens. Uh, we are a kind of infoscape, positive if able to influence the villages by uh, developing relationship and providing them with uh, high degree of connectivity and accessibility. Negative if relationship are weak. Uh, one of most serious uh, current uh, weaknesses of sustainable uh, development is that it's not possible to measure the level of, of sustainability reached by a particular village or by, or by uh, a state. In other words, how can we economically measure sustainability if it's a multidimensional concept? Therefore, economic, social, and environment aspects must be considered simultaneously. Uh, from a technological point of view, in my opinion, and from my experience in projects, the most appropriate tool for a multidimensional representation is the GIS for the ability to manage a large amount of formation, the possibility to update it, and for being an excellent decision support tool. How, uh, however, uh, precisely, this uh, availability of technology brings up a problem. It's necessary to build a real involvement of the population on environmental issues, starting first of all from the awareness raising and education phases, then putting together the right to enjoy a quality territory and the responsibility of the citizen who must be active in this, right and responsibility that must be built through a landscape literacy path. Uh, that's the literacy of the territory, which starts from the ability to study the urban and rural territory to acquire a sense of responsibility towards it. The importance uh, of sealing a sort of uh, collaboration pact with the citizen to relaunch a smart village. Um, Thanks to image, uh, citizens participate more actively in modeling the city on their needs. No longer city, but a user produced city. In fact, uh, it's not uh, con um, coincidence that uh, uh, the global and local tourist trend of the uh, use of the environmental heritage of the smart villages see an increase in tourists with uh, higher level of education, belonging to the age 35-55, who choose to visit parks and smart village, uh, even if not very popular, in order to get to know the local culture, traditions, and gastronomy. These trends are produced by COVID-19. It must also be considered that the coronavirus stop has brought back the need for nature in the city. The question is more open than ever. The combination of city and nature seems to be moving towards a symbiosis. This is because uh, communities aspire uh, to enjoy a high quality of life uh, so much so that they positively consider the restoration and reuse of existing structures. 
even uh, at high density as uh, an antidote for uh, to sprawl. Therefore, territorial and environment policies must uh, take into account the needs of a new and different population with different real estate needs, but with uh, an idea of the city and nature. This is demonstrated by the posts shared on social media with their unique ability to capture the moon of the moment and uh, to uh, stimulate powerful actions in positive and in negative. Uh, for example, a big number of job storytelling of small villages has come up. Uh, this series of performative media mapping uh, has immediately found a participative audience of tourists uh, or residents uh, capturing emotions and redefining the experiential paths increasing the reputation of the smart villages, uh, thus obtaining a new sustainable territorial competitive positioning. Uh, what the problem is in a social media villages? Uh, the ubiquity of uh, access to the web can lead to uh, a huge flow of data uh, and then or any announcement or initiative uh, that's launched by local authorities on social networks. Not everyone has access to online activities. Uh, knowing uh, who is contributing is not uh, entirely simple. Uh, on the web, undiscovered information becomes a chasm within a, a few clicks and that is why there must be prompt responses. There is a need for competent staff ready to respond to requests for information from citizen or uh, users in an appropriate manner. Therefore, in a vast range of technology, we still need a continuous updating of information and also rapid assessment of the possible impact on the territory. In terms of identity and experience, but also on the possibility to structurally understand how the social network is formed and expand and is effective in local development. It's evident the uh, active uh, citizenship is certainly an opportunity for sm uh, smart villages, as it's uh, easier for the smaller urban dimension to become a space dedicated to dialogue, to sharing, and to development. Uh, in a certain way, uh, all this availability of uh, technologies not only makes uh, us imagine, but produces uh, a village or a virtual landscape in real time, which is increasingly illustrated through social media. Citizens are able to report on everything uh, because the social network is formed and expand and, and uh, is effective in local development. It must be reiterated that uh, all this implies uh, the existence of a functioning sensor infrastructure able to collect in real time the need of the citizen and predict the citizen request. Uh, the citizen ability to access and interact, the possibility of rescheduling services in a dynamic and flexible way. But it's not just a matter of having to choose a specific center model but rather of identifying the sustainability rules applicable to all settlement models. The real experts of this area are the, citizen, uh, are the citizens uh, with their wealth of direct knowledge of the places with uh, uh, which they relate and the 
ways in which they gain experience. Their mobilization around projects that are sharing increasing the competitiveness and the eco-sustainable attractives of smart villages. And joy effort is needed to restore the centrally to marginality, which can activate a process of uh, uh, empowerment so that citizens and the sensor of the place can become the real protagonist of the green transition. However, a real training which can activate a process of empowerment for an interpreting community, it's necessary. In this sense, the participatory digital geo storytelling is the powerful means for modern learning and for discovering villages and communities. In my opinion, the real challenge is not technical, but narrative. I will say geographic uh, narration. Uh, thank you for attention. Uh, and uh, again, I know that uh, uh, you don't have uh, time and you uh, unfortunately need to leave us. Uh, so thank you for your great presentation. Actually, yes, but after after the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to to rethink about the future of tourism in, in, uh, in, in the world. So the last uh, speakers. Uh, the last speaker here today uh, from Jordan, from the University of Jordan, Dr. Malik Jamalia, uh, my colleague. He is an associate professor at the Tibar Department of Tourism at the University of Jordan. Dr. Malik uh, has received his PhD uh, uh, in parks, recreation, and tourism management from Clemson University in the United States. Um, he, his research interests focus on ecotourism, sustainable tourism, climate change adaptation and protected area uh, management. And Dr. Malik is uh, gonna share with us um, one of his case studies from Jordan that uh, uh, prove uh, how uh, ecotourism can be used as a tool of uh, sustainable uh, uh, development. Dr. Malik, the mic is yours. Uh, thank you, Mohammed, And thank you for all uh, your colleagues for organizing this great event to talk about uh, sustainable tourism in the mid region. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay. Uh, today I will talk about ecotourism as a tool for sustainable development in one of the most important protected area in Jordan. Uh, these are the outlines of my presentation. I will talk about ecotourism in general, uh, ecotourism in Jordan. Uh, the goal of my research, I will talk briefly about this destination, uh, the study method. And finally, I will talk about the results of my study, which about sustainability practices in this important protected area. Actually, after 1950, there was a, a significant increase in the international tourism. And many countries around the globe believe that tourism uh, can be an important economic driver for these countries. So at that time, they paid too much attention to the economic benefits of the tourism, and they completely ignore the impacts of tourism at local communities and local environment. Later on in the 1960s, 1970s, they realized that tourism can also damage. If it's not well managed, it may damage the local community and the local environment. Uh, so the question at that time, especially in the 1970s, was how tourism can be developed and managed. What is the best approach to manage tourism to satisfy social needs, economic needs, and environmental needs? Uh, and the answer actually found in the 1980s, when different forms of alternative tourism emerged, such as community-based tourism, proper tourism, and ecotourism. So all these are types or forms of what we call it alternative tourism, alternative to mass tourism. And the concept of ecotourism, I think, emerged in the beginning of 1980s as a response, as a reaction to the negative 
social, economic, and environmental impacts of traditional tourism, especially mass tourism. Uh, there are this approach or this type of tourism, so ecotourism has different uh, principles and characteristics. The first one is responsibly travel to uh, national destinations, uh, education for both local communities and travelers, uh, providing uh, funds and financial support for, for environmental conservation efforts, uh, providing economic benefits for local community and also respect local culture, local norms, and local values. So these are the main uh, and the key principles of ecotourism in general. After that, in the, in the 1980s, 1990s, many countries around the globe have adopted the concept of ecotourism to become an effective tool or an integrated tool of sustainable development and uh, environmental conservation. So this, this type of travel actually balance between environmental conservation and uh, economic development. In Jordan, like other countries, Jordan is best known for its rich cultural and heritage resources, but it also has a, a very unique ecosystem. To protect this unique ecosystem and biodiversity, uh, a network of a protected area uh, has been designated to protect this important ecosystem. Uh, the Royal Society for the Conservation of, of Nature, which is an organization responsible for managing protected area in Jordan, has adapted or found ecotourism is the best approach or the best method can be developed in the protected areas uh, to, to, uh, to provide uh, uh, benefits for local communities at the same time uh, protect the unique uh, natural resources that we have. So the beginning of ecotourism in Jordan started in Dana Biosphere Reserve, which is the last, which, which, is, which, is, which is the most important and the most diverse protected area in Jordan. So this is the start uh, of uh, ecotourism programs and project, projects in Jordan. In this study, we are going to assist to evaluate uh, uh, social, economic, and environmental sustain sustainability practices in Dana Biosphere Z. What are the uh, strategies? What are the practices that have been used in this destination uh, to benefit local communities, to, live, to benefit uh, local environment, and also provide uh, support and financial uh, uh, resources uh, for environmental conservation in this reserve. Uh, this is actually Dana, is, is, it is la the largest protected area located southwest Jordan, as we see in this map. So it is the largest and the most diverse protected area uh, in Jordan. Uh, this area actually uh, covers uh, more than three, 300 square kilometers, including four uh, semi-arid and arid ecosystems. So it, it includes four ecosystems. Uh, because of these four ecosystems, it has more than uh, 800 types of plants, uh, almost 250 types of birds, and more than five types of mammals. In other words, this reserve or this protected area includes almost one third of the biodiversity that Jordan has. In addition to that, to the rich natural resources, the reserve also has different historical remains regarding Egyptian civilization, Arabic civilization, Islamic civilization, and Nabataean and Roman civilization. So it is rich in both uh, cultural resources and uh, natural resources. Uh, this reserve uh, include different tourism activities such as uh, camping, hiking, beard watching, and live wildlife uh, observations. So these are the main, uh, the most popular tourist activities in this reserve. These are some pictures of this reserve. So we see the mountains, the, the mammals, and the uh, heritage in this uh, picture. So it is actually rich in both cultural and uh, natural resources. Uh, actually, to answer the, the main question of this research, I used a qualitative method. So 
uh, almost 13 semi-structure interviews conducted with the key informants in the reserve, uh, including four owners and managers of ecotourism uh, enterprises and facilities, three managers of the, uh, the reserve, uh, four environmental research, uh, researchers from the reserve and from the Royal Society for the Conservation of Nature, and also two leaders of local organizations. And I use content analysis to analyze the uh, interview transcript. Now, as I said before, the results will include three groups or three parts, the environmental practices, the practices at the social part, and the last, the, the third one is economic practices. What are the practices to help environment? What are the practices to support local community? And what are the practices and the strategies to enhance local environment? Uh, the first one, I will talk about uh, environmental practices. What are the methods? What are the strategies or mechanisms that have been used in this reserve to support environmental conservation? There actually there are several uh, strategies. I will talk about them briefly. The first and the most important one is zoning, land use plan. Actually, as as this uh, map shows, uh, this reserve is divided into three different zones. Uh, we have wilderness zone. This area actually. Uh, it covers the, the uh, most sensitive and the most important natural resources in the reserve, and there is no human activities in this one. So this one is actually just for protection, the most important natural resources in the reserve. The second, the second area is semi-intensive zone, which includes limited type of human activities or, or human use, especially uh, tourism facilities and tourism activities. And the last area is intensive zone in this, this area. It is, this area actually, it's open for the use of local people, especially for open grazing. So this is the first strategy that actually helps the reserve to protect the resources. And the second strategy is visitor planning design. This strategy or this method actually helps the management to determine the most suitable locations for uh, tourism facilities and hiking routes. What are the best, what are the most suitable locations for building uh, motels or uh, infrastructure or hiking routes? So by using this one, we'll select the, the, the most suitable location which have less environmental impacts uh, on the local environment. The second or the third strategy is sustainable infrastructure design. This is regarding the design of the tourism facilities in the reserve. So if we look at the tourism facilities, especially hotels, we see all of them are green buildings in terms of the outside design, the internal design, the cooling system, the heating system, also all of them, they practice, uh, they adapt what we call it sustainability practices, such as recycle, uh, uh, recycle and uh, uh, solar power, water treatment, uh, water conservation tools, and so on. Uh, the, fourth, the fourth strategy actually it's oriented or directed to the local people. We know environmental education is one of the most important tool uh, for environmental conservation. And uh, this reserve actually has different programs and projects to educate local people about the, the environmental or sustainable practices, how local community should deal with the local environment. As, as we all know that the environmental conservation will never succeed without the support and the engagement of local community. So as I said before, there are, there are several projects and programs targeting local people to educate them about the best practices and how they deal with the uh, environment in a wise way. So they have programs that are uh, targeting uh, people who are working in the public organizations. They have programs targeting students 
to increase the awareness of a new generation about uh, the environmental issues and the best practices uh, in the reserve. And also they organized different programs and events to educate public people about uh, different environmental issues and the best environmental practices in general. Um, uh, also, in addition to that, uh, interpretation also is one of the strategies that have been used in the reserve to enhance environmental conservation. And the most important or obvious tool in the destination is tour guide. Uh, most uh, trips, most tours in the destination are guided, guided by local tours. So since all tours or trips in the reserve are guided by local people or local guides, this, uh, this way will enhance the experience and the satisfaction of tourists. And also the tour guide will share the lo the, the, their knowledge, information about the local culture, about the local environment. And the most important thing that tour guides will prevent any activities that might harm the environment. And they also can support the, the environment sustainable behavior of tourists during their visit uh, or tour. They also use uh, conservation laws. The reserve has different or many rangers who try to uh, implement the conservation laws and prevent any illegal actions and activities done by local community that might harm the environment, especially hunting, uh, overgrazing, or illegally grazing and logging, and all any illegal activities that might harm uh, the environment. Also, in collaboration with the local farmers and uh, owners of livestock, they develop a grassland management in, so in specific areas in the reserve, and this management will help the local community, will benefit the local community, so they can use the, uh, the natural resources in the reserve and also uh, ensure the sustainable use of the uh, natural resources that the reserve has. So here in this case, we benefit local people and also we provide protection and sustainable use of the resources. Uh, one of the last one, that I have here is vis visitor management. Uh, by implementing what we call it, carrying capacity. Carrying capacity. So if we uh, uh, look at the uh, trails, the tourism facilities, all of them, they have carrying capacity. They implement the, the concept of carrying capacity. So the most important sites in the destination has the maximum number of visitors. This is will uh, reduce the negative impacts of tourism activities in the reserve at the same time enhance and reinforce the experience and the satisfactions of tourists during their visit. And this is regarding uh, environmental practices. Also, uh, now we will talk about economic practices. How does ecotourism in this destination help the local economy, the local economy in general? Actually, ecotourism helps local community uh, in, from the perspective, uh, from the economic perspective in different ways. The first one, in this destination, since the 19, in the 1995, uh, different ecotourism enterprises have been developed in the destination. For example, there are three main uh, accommodations run by the reserve management like guest, the guest house, the Finan Ecology, and the Aromana camp. And also many uh, local or many small hotels um, owned and managed by local communities. So I think there are more than uh, 10 or 11 uh, small accommodations in the destination run by local communities in general. So that means eco ecotourism has become an important economic sector or driver in this uh, remote uh, area. In addition to that, to the ecotourism business enterprises, the reserve management uh, has developed uh, different alternative livelihoods for local community. Uh, this 
livelihood opportunities include uh, different workshops like fruit drying work, workshop, uh, silver workshops, uh, goat leather planning uh, workshops. They, so the, in collaboration with the local community, the management developed different alternative livelihoods to provide a new source of income for uh, local people and alleviate uh, poverty level in this destination. Also, uh, in collaboration also with different organizations and local farmers, there's a development of sustainable livelihoods. Many people, many uh, local people work in agriculture and uh, livestock raising. So the management is trying uh, to develop different projects to help and sustain these traditional livelihoods. For example, uh, the reserve in collaboration with public and non-public organization in the area, they build uh, two or three earthen dams for livestock watering. They also try to uh, develop or conduct the training courses for local farmers, how they can manage their farms and uh, increase their productivity and their income with less environmental impacts on there in the destination. Uh, in addition to that, the reserve also try to help local people and local organizations uh, to gain funds and the grants from the local uh, organizations or uh, the international organizations to help local community developing and uh, develop local uh, projects in the destination. And the last one, the last method is uh, the nature shop. The, the reserve has a nature shop which marketing and selling uh, local uh, products uh, in general. So this, these are different methods, different techniques that have been used to enhance, to support uh, the local uh, economy in general. The last part is regarding practices to enhance the well-being and the local culture in general. Actually, there are several techniques and strategies to enhance and support local community and their culture. The first one is uh, ecotourism is playing a very important role in improving the well-being of local community. And if we look, if we look at these numbers, we can see the importance of ecotourism in this station. For example, uh, all people who work in the, this destination and tourism facilities are from the local community. So the reserve and the tourism, act, uh, tourism facilities will provide more than 85 direct jobs to the local people. Also, more than 200 families indirectly benefit from, benefit from the reserve and the ecotourism industry in the destination. According, I think, to the report in 19... Uh, six, in 2016, more than $3 million, uh, $3, $3 million directed to the, local, to the local economy from the reserve and the ecotourism industry. So these numbers show that, show the importance of ecotourism for improving the well-being of local community. Also, if there is a collaboration and partnership between uh, the reserve administration and uh, local organizations and non-public organizations and public organizations to address uh, the general issues in the destination in general. Uh, also, development of the local infrastructure, especially the, the roads. Uh, also, the fourth strategy is the capacity building and empowerment of local community. And if we look at these pictures, the em empowerment of local women. We know this community is very conservative. So the management in collaboration with local people are trying to build the skills of local women to engage, to participate in the uh, uh, economic activities and the tourism industry in general. So they are trying to enhance an improvement, uh, empowerment of local women in, in specific and local people in general. Uh, also, the, the fourth strategy of supporting local community is preservation of local culture and local heritage. Uh, the, this reserve 
include a complete village built by local community 500 years ago. And most people live this village. So I think in uh, 2009, the reserve got the fund from the USAID, I think $3 million to rebuild this heritage village. So, so this is a sign of preservation of the local heritage and the local village. Uh, also, the reserve in collaboration with local people and local organizations, they are trying to organize and develop events that appreciate the local culture and the local heritage. And finally, uh, most food, most products used by tourism facilities are local food. So tourists who visit this destination, they will completely enjoy and use the authentic food. So there is no fast food, all foods, all products, in the reserve and the tourism facilities are local uh, products and local food. Uh, after this brief description about the sustainability practices, uh, uh, Finan, for example, these are rewards to the destination. Uh, for example, in 2013, Finan Ecology, which is located in the reserve, selected in 2013, one of the best 25 ecology in the world. Uh, two weeks ago, Dana Bay Reserve was selected one of the best 52 places in the world where tourists can participate in solving problem like uh, climate change and environmental conservation. However, this destination is still facing different challenges, either natural challenges or uh, human challenges. The first and the most, the main challenge is the conflict with local people. Many local people, they said that the reserve was established at the cost of their uh, traditional lands and prevent them from using the land. So there's still a conflict with many local people over the use of natural resources in the reserve. So we see different illegal activities, different harmful activities by local people, such as poaching, illegal hunting, uh, logging, cutting trees in, the, in, in this important reserve, illegally grazing. So these are illegal activities, harmful activities done by local community, which may damage, if we don't find solution for them, they may damage the uh, rich environment and which may uh, negatively affect the sustainability process in this important destination. Also, fluctuation in tourism demand. We know that there are, especially after, since the pandemic started to, to, two years ago, and before that, the uh, political instability in the Middle East, all these issues negatively affect the tourism demand, which may negatively affect the development of ecotourism in this destination. Uh, also, this reserve and uh, like many protected areas in Jordan, they have lack of financial resources. So they have limited financial resources, so they cannot do all our projects and programs to enhance the local economy, local environment, or support uh, local community. Recently, climate change has become one of the main, from the main threats that may damage the uh, local environment. For example, most of the water bodies in this reserve have completely dried up. They have... Uh, shifting in the uh, ecosystem, damage to the forest, like that dieback of, Geni uh, of Geneva. So climate change act actually creates different environmental problems in the destination. Uh, lastly, mining. Uh, last year, the Jordanian government uh, is planning or planning to cut one third of the reserve to allow mining for copper. So mining is the new challenge, is a new threat to this unique destination. Uh, at the end, I can say that ecotourism is playing an, an, an important role as an integrated tool of environmental conservation and local community development. Uh, however, we see that environmental conservation receives more attention than social and uh, economic consideration. Uh, finally, uh, community participation in this making process is still limited because of the centralization of the decision making in this is it. Uh, this is my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank, thank you. I thank hope you. I finished within the, the limited time.
You did, you did a great job, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Malik. Thank you for this presentation. We have uh, uh, some questions from Maria, actually. Uh, uh, Maria is asking, in your opinion, what are the most two friendly products for Donna? Is there scope for entrepreneurship and innovation in the provision of service? Uh, there's another question. What good and bad lessons have you learned from other international sites also recognized as biosphere reserves? Can you please repeat the first, the first question? Okay, the first question is, is about the, the product or the friendly products. What are the most friendly products for Donna? Um, actually, there are different, there are many friendly activities, uh, but according to Donna, I think uh, we can talk about uh, bear, wildlife observations and bear observations because especially tourists who are interested in these two activities are more friendly and they can help the local environment and local economy in different uh, aspects. Also, regarding Dana or in Dana, I think uh, relying completely on the natural environment, it's a, it's a wrong approach. We, I think we need to develop uh, some uh, cultural activities. So in this case, we will reduce the pressure uh, on the in natural environment and also we will enrich the uh, visit the experience and enhance the, the, the satisfaction of tourists during this travel. And this will, in, they may reduce our dependence on the local environment. So I think we need to uh, make different products regarding the local culture and the local heritage. And also we need to just to focus on the wildlife observation and bird watching in this destination. And the second question, the second question was, uh, what good and bad lessons have you learned from other international sites also recognized as uh, reserves? Actually, if you have any uh, experience from other uh, countries, maybe, or other reserves, so. I think, I think we, uh, I think always I, I always read about uh, community-based tourism in Botswana and South Africa. I think, uh, according to this case, there's still a conflict between the local community and the administration of the reserve. And over the last fifty years, they cannot solve this problem. And I think, uh, from my point of view, and from what from the different studies I read, I th think we need to enhance the engagement and the uh, involvement of local community in the development, uh, planning, and managing, management of the reserve. Because if we involve the local community, this will enhance the psychological ownership, the loyalty of local community to this reserve. But if we ignore the local community, we, we will keep conflicting, keep in a trouble with and problems with the local community. So I think the business in that we need to completely engage and involve local communities in the decision making process. This will enhance the loyalty and the psychological ownership of local community toward Dana. And this is will uh, enhance what we call it long term sustainability of this destination at different aspects at the economic aspect, environmental aspect, and also uh, at the uh, social and cultural aspects. Okay, thank, thank you, Dr. Malik. We have, uh, let's take the last question from Dr. Radi. Uh, he's asking from your perspective, do you think that the public authorities play a good role in promoting responsible ecotourism practices in Jordan? He's asking about Jordan, not Donna in general. And do you think the local communities are empowered enough to be in cope with the principles of ecotourism? Uh, regarding the first question, I don't think so. I don't think so because of the difficult economic situation that we have. The government is always it tries to find a solution for the, the for the economic crisis, even at the cost of the environment. This is what we see, and the, the most obvious example that the government right now is thinking to cut one third of the reserve to use it for mining. So I think all we in, in, in Jordan, like other third world, third, third world, 
We always care about the economic benefits, even at the cost or at the expenses of local environment. So I think we don't care about the environment. We always care about the economic benefits. And uh, the second question, I think uh, I already uh, answered this question regarding the empowerment of local community. And, and I think uh, we need to in, in, in empower the local community, enhance their involvement. But as, as he said, I think we need uh, to enhance the skills and the knowledge, the capabilities of local community to be able to uh, manage the destination on the long on the long run. So I think I agree with him that we need to build the capabilities of local people to be able to manage and develop and take the lead of this destination in the future. So I think the first step is to involve local community. Yeah, thank you. We we return to the first uh, point that we mentioned in in this webinar that supporting of residents and understanding their perceptions toward the uh, development of tourism and sustainable tourism is very important to get their support and to achieve the goals of uh, uh, sustainable development from their different dimensions, the the economic, social, and environmental. Uh, we Actually, we run out of the time. So um, again, I would like uh, to thank uh, all of you, the speakers, the participants, the attendees for joining us today, for uh, the speakers for their presentations, the attendees for questions and uh, joining the, the, uh, the seminar. Special thank with, uh, to uh, Emilia and uh, Dr. Zerva, who uh, worked hard. Uh, uh, in coordinating and organizing this uh, webinar with me. Thank you all. And I just, I will leave the, the mic with uh, Emilia. She has an announcement for a webinar, right? Uh, yes, it is uh, linked to the, to the topic of uh, Biosphere Reserve actually, which are a very, uh, I mean, place for sustainable development, which, uh, and that's, uh, definition. This is per definition of the uh, UNESCO, uh, not uh, mine. And uh, following this uh, this uh, topic of the biosphere reserve, yes, there are. Uh, we are working in a project that uh, is managing activity in the biosphere reserve in Lebanon and uh, Morocco, uh, in enhancing the cooperation with the universities. And uh, uh, for this, on the 31st of January, there will be uh, a webinar focusing on the um, tools developed for the uh, improvement of collaboration between uh, Biosphere Reserve and University. So open research tool um, and on online courses that want to enhance this, uh, uh, this collaboration. I put, uh, not take more time, the link here in the chat for the, for the person that can be interested. And um, as a final word, I want to thank you, uh, Professor Halazaze, Professor Derva. I want to thank you all the speaker for their availability time and interesting and inspiring uh, presentation. Uh, just one last word is that the recording of this meeting uh, will be available in the next few days on your website and uh, we will follow up with an email about uh, all this information. Thank you all and have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you all very much for participating. We hope that very soon we will see the evolution of your investigations and new results, new impacts, the continuance of your investigations and uh, have another webinar and see how that goes and how that evolves. We wish you the best of luck. And thank you very much for being with us today and for being a little bit longer than was predicted. And we, are, we have passed 12. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you Thank all you soon. So Thank Bye. You. Thank Bye. you.